Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can set up and install MailCal for your Home Lab. Um, so MailCal is essentially kind of similar to like, you know, a Microsoft Exchange server where you essentially set up um, email and inboxing, um, where it does have a GUI, you can log into a uh, user's inbox and actually, you know, send emails and whatnot. Um, so in this case, we'll just be pretty much showing you how you can do it that way. Um, this won't be like a, how do you set up a mail server and, you know, host it in the world? This is just purely for my home lab. Um, if you want to set up a mail server for the world, there's a lot more to consider than what I'm going to show in this video, just an FYI. Um, but for some, you know, self-hosted applications, sometimes you want to enable mail and you want to see how it all works without you know enabling mail in in the real world and you just want to contain it to your home lab um, mail count is a very good solution to get started with it and try it out so uh let's get started all right so the first thing that we will need to do is essentially set up dns so that essentially it resolves and then create a vm for this um i haven't tested my vm uh, like fully since I've switched over to Proxmox, which I've now officially um, I've officially turned off my old server. So I'm running on the minis form completely right now. So It has been doing me justice right now um, It hasn't restarted since the um, microcode update, which is great so I think the microcode update is was the solution in my case for why it was freezing up but in this case um, I'm hoping the rest of the playbooks work without any issues. So we'll set up MailCow to have the IP address of 172.16.1.11, well, uh, 1.119, so we'll add that. We'll have to make sure the pipeline actually finishes correctly, <laughs> um, because I didn't test everything um, since I've migrated over to my Proxmox instance. Um, but so far, I've been loving it, so the job succeeded, so we're good with that. And then what we need to do is also update our Ansible playbooks um, to add the inventory in here for MailCow so that I can target it and create things in here. Add MailCow. All right, and we'll have to make sure that this also this pipeline also finishes as well. Um, but we did convert our create VM template to the Proxmox template in our, in our last video, so um, we should be good here. So that's good. So what we should be able to do here is run this workflow, which will essentially create the VM using Proxmox in this case, um, because we updated that template to do the Proxmox install, patch it, install Docker and Docker Compose, create certs on our step CA server, which I think that one is going to be the, the sketchiest one, because I don't know if that one's going to work. Um, because that is a different server, but we'll see. Um, so what we'll do is the host name will be MailCow. The IP will be 119. The VM name, we'll just name it Dragon MailCow. The proxy address, which is um, what we'll need to know for proxying. Um, so MailCow Docker installation. Uh, let's take a look here. I don't know if we actually really need to proxy anything. Um, since I think it will do it on self. So, um, looks like 8080 might be it. Stop MailCal. There's a doc compose. If you're not using my you should redirect our HTTPS to be. Um, so, okay. So, I think it creates its own self signed cert um, in this case. So, um, we won't deal with the set stuff. I'll just do a, a random proxy um, right now, and we can update it if we need to. Um, and then we'll hit launch. So we'll we'll let the magic happen here, and hopefully uh, it, everything works without any any uh, huge uh, issues here. But um, we're going to install and copy the VM template from Proxmox over, and it'll create a new VM from that. Um, set the host name and the IP address. Um, and if you want more details, feel free to check out uh, my last few automation videos. Um, I've gone through and essentially explained each of one of these jobs um, and how they work. So, um, as well as my GitHub has my playbooks too. Um, in case you're interested, you can go check out my GitHub as Sashdrew. Um, I think it's Ansible Playbooks. I will leave a link in the description also. So, um, this will probably take a few minutes, so we'll let this go um, and then we'll come back once this is all done.
All right, so it failed on the set and I fixed that, but we don't actually need the set playbook to, to finish or the engine X uh, because it will create a self sign set on its own for now. So what we'll do is now we can log in to the machine. So we at mail cow dot dragon dot local. We will set the key type in the password. Um, and then we can see, you know, Docker's is installed and, and all the stuff that we need. So we'll go back to the documentation here. Um, scroll up. So Docker and Doc Compose installation. So we already have that installed. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry about that. That's still Docker related stuff. Um, if you have SE Linux enabled, which I don't on my machines, um, you should um, check some SE Linux specific stuff. Um, now we get to the fun part. So We'll go over here. So make sure the UMask is set to 0022. So let's double check that. UMask is 0022. Um, we'll change to opt and then we will do a get clone. So let's copy this here. Copy that. So change to opt. We'll actually also need to install git because I don't have git installed. This is what you get for doing minimal installations. It only takes a uh, the software that is needed, not everything. And then we'll run the, the get clone. So we'll get clone into this and go to Mailcal Dockerized. And we can see that we got the Docker stuff up here. So what we we'll want to do here, so we cd into it. So generate config.sh. So we'll generate the config, found Docker Compose stuff. So Mail server host name. Um, so ours is going to be mail cow dot dragon dot local. Um, yeah, I am in America, Chicago. And oh yeah, my default the default memory on this is less than two gigs. So yeah, we'll just disable clear maybe so it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Um, we'll do the master branch because we want stability in this case, um, and then it'll generate everything that it needs to generate. So. Uh, the checks complete everything's good um, We can edit the configuration if we want to so if you plan to use a reverse proxy you can bind on this or that um, Which we could we could set up later if we want to do that um, and we use nginx, but we don't need to worry about that So now we can just start it. So we do a doc compose poll um, Which technically we don't need to do the top one the bottom one will pull it if it doesn't exist So really all we need to do is a uh, doc compose up hyphen detach um, And it will pull everything so there, there's, there's a decent amount that comes in with this so um, I think um, Dovecot a few other things um, They have the engine X as well as um, well, this is kind of, this is this is definitely harder to read, um, so we'll have to wait for this to finish. Um, but it includes a few other things. So there's a GUI that I think is written in like Go or something, and I and I messed that up. Um, there it goes. Uh, now now I've reached the bottom finally. Um, so this might take you know about a minute, um, depending on your internet speed and how fast your container your uh, server is responding. Um, but there's a decent amount amount of containers that that is pulled. Um, here, and I didn't think it was going to take this long, but apparently it's going to take this long. Oh, it's probably because I only gave it like one CPU and one gig of RAM from from the template. Um, that's that's probably why it's taking this long. <laughs> I probably should have should have gave it more. Um, but you can see everything is starting here, so we got a lot of containers. Um, so yeah, it's running Postfix with Dovecop. You got some PHP. Uh, you got Watchdog, a few other things. Uh, net filter and, and whatnot. So, so there's a lot of things that go into this um, Docker Compose file to run it. Um, but I can say it's still significantly simpler doing it this way than trying to set up a, a Microsoft Exchange mail server, <laughs> um, because th those installation steps are just, oh man. Um, you can actually go watch. I actually do have a video on that if you ever want to go watch it. So. Um, wouldn't recommend watching it if you're not planning to create it though. Um, but, um, well, every, everything's zoomed in. Um, but you can see that we have all these services. It is created, it is running. Um, so what we can do here um, is take a look at the instructions here. So we should be able to go to HTTPS, the host name, the admin credentials is admin and mahu. 
So we'll go to HTTPS mail cow dot dragon dot local. Um, and this is the self signed sit that it created, and we're not using our engine X, so that's why it's erroring here. Um, so admin mahu, we can log in here. Um, doc mode. Um, and you can see that now you are logged into MailCow. Um, obviously, I probably should have gave it some more memory and CPU because this is going to be a little bit more intensive than probably most of the things that we'll be running. Um, but uh, the cool part is essentially what we want to be doing um, in regards to getting a actual email uh, set up and being able to log in. So if, up here under email, this configuration, so we can add a domain. Um, so this is the domain that you know we'll email from. So let's say the domain is going to be dragon.local. Um, in this case, I'll leave everything as a default. Um, we will want to add a domain and restart uh, Sogo container. The Sogo container is essentially the web interface um, that we'll be using uh, to be able to you know have a mailbox and and see it. Um, and then we'll create two mailboxes in this case. So we'll add two mailboxes. So we'll do like Dragon one in here. We'll enter a password or paste the password, and then we can leave everything as default and hit add. And we'll add a dragon two here as well, um, just so you guys can see sending an email via this. And hit add as well. So now we got two emails, um, Dragon One and Dragon Two. Uh, if we go to apps up here, there's a webmail, so we can go to this webmail, which will bring you to the login screen. Um, this is the login screen for essentially getting to like the web, so like uh, web app. So essentially, think about like this for like Microsoft. This would be like Outlook essentially, right? Um, so we'll log in as Dragon One at Dragon Local. We'll type in the password, and we'll log in here. We'll also open an, uh, an incognito tab here um, to log in as Dragon 2 just so you can see um, what it looks like. Uh, it's kind of side side by side with two emails. Um, so we'll do Dragon 2 at Dragon.local. Type in the password and enter. So now you can see um, on a little left side over here we got dragon one and on the right side you got dragon two both of them have inboxes um, and you can actually write email so we can write a message so say for example I wanted to send an email to dragon two at dragon dot local test test and send um, so this will essentially send through you'll get the email um, and it will sent be sent over and eventually this should refresh and get it so um, you can see in here we got a that dragon one has sent us test. Um, we can reply back to the sender test confirmed um, and send that over as well. Um, so you can see here um, some personal calendar things have been created. So there'll be calendar related things as well for this app. But you can see test received or test confirmed. Um, I got back. So now you can essentially use this for any other. Um, you know services or things in your home lab that you're self-hosting to test you know email functionality um, without needing to do a actual email over the internet um, so there you go guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like comment subscribe and we'll see you in the next video bye